to Iran. Juan? Well, the Wall Street Journal reported Monday that European telecommunications companies have helped the Iranian government develop one of the world's most sophisticated mechanisms to monitor and control communications on the Internet. This capability was provided in part by a joint venture of the German-based Siemens AG and Nokia, the Finnish cell phone company. The Iranian government appears to be engaging in a practice often called deep packet inspection, which enables authorities to block communication, gather information about individuals, as well as alter it for disinformation purposes. The Wall Street Journal also reports that China's Internet censoring mechanism is believed to use deep packet inspection as well. Well, the media reform group Free Press says the same technology is also being widely deployed here in the United States. To find out more about deep packet inspection and concerns about how this kind of technology can be used, we're joined via Democracy Now! video stream by Josh Silver, the executive director of Free Press, freepress.net. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Josh. Explain what they're doing in Iran and then how the same technology is being used here. Well, yesterday, the Wall Street Journal reported that the Iranian government had secured this system from a German and Finnish company that will look through everything, both landline telephones, mobile telephones, email, websites, looking for keywords and, uh, and actually uh, monitoring the entire traffic going through one choke point in Iran. It's been disputed by the, the European company, but the, the, the validity of the report seems solid. What's scary about this is that this technology that monitors everything that goes through the Internet is something that works, it's readily available, and there's no legislation in the United States that prevents the U.S. government from, from employing it. And that's, that's what's really uh, the cautionary tale here. Your report is called Deep Packet Inspection, the end of the Internet as we know it. Why does it threaten the Internet overall? Well, the problem is, is that, you know, if you look back to the 1930s, when telephone service became ubiquitous around the United States, lawmakers realized then that there was this new communications infrastructure and there needed to be consumer protections so that the government and others could not uh, unlawfully or unethically monitor and listen in to the private conversations of American citizens. They established laws that prevented that from happening. And those laws, it made it so that the government requires a legitimate warrant issued by a judge that lets them do such monitoring. Now we don't have that. So what we have is this sort of free-for-all where the policy that governs the Internet has not caught up with the technology. So you have these incredible systems uh, built primarily by companies like Cisco out in California that have the ability to do this. Now, we're not saying that AT&T, Verizon, and Comcast are like the Iranian government, but we do see a problem where even our own president, with his progressive Internet policy agenda, last year flipped on this issue and actually supported a Bush administration law that granted immunity to the largest phone and cable companies for turning over citizens' private records to the government, which was illegal at the time. Uh, your organization a couple of years ago raised uh, questions about what Comcast was doing in terms of, uh, of this issue. Could you explain that? Sure. Last year, we filed a suit at the uh, Federal Communications Commission and actually sanctioned Comcast Cable for the first time any major carrier being punished for blocking so-called network neutrality. That is, they were discriminating against certain Internet content over others. And the reason these issues are so important is that all communications, phone service, web service, uh, radio, is all moving towards a, a, an online connection, all going through the Internet. So this is really about the future of all communication in America. And how does packet inspection work the way deep packet inspection works is that you have sophisticated equipment that literally watches the entire Internet, and it watches for every piece of data, voice, video that goes through and pulls out keywords. It pulls out uh, key, uh, key, both written and uh, spoken, and looking for things like rebel or grenade or what have you, and then it will trigger that, and that will go to the NSA version in this case in the in the country of Iran. But the the potential of this technology to give government this sort of big brother monitoring uh, ability, which goes way beyond any of the constitutional protections that are in our original. 
uh, Constitution are really uh, a cautionary tale and should have everyone in this country on notice. It is notable that there's been very little follow-up coverage of this issue since yesterday's Wall Street Journal piece. Mm. Uh, what's happening in China, Josh Silver? Well, China has very similar systems. What's a little bit interesting about the, what happened yesterday is that Iran seems to be, and again, this has not been completely proven, but, but according to the Wall Street Journal, it appears that Iran is actually monitoring this web traffic in one single choke point on the web, whereas China does it in many different locations. That's not a big difference, but everyone and everyone knows that the Chinese government is terrible on protecting the privacy of their citizens. But we do have a situation where uh, this is starting to become ubiquitous in countries with bad human rights records. And it's one that we have to uh, get some legislation on both internationally and in the U.S. Congress if we're going to, to sort of stem this. Uh, Josh, can you talk more about um, how this can be deployed here at home, how it's done without our knowledge, and what you feel can be done about it? Well, it's widely known that the major carriers, particularly AT&T and Verizon, were being asked by the NSA, by the Bush administration, during the last seven, eight years, since 9-11 particularly, where they were asked to deploy sort of off-the-shelf technology made by some of these companies like Cisco that would do what I just described, that would listen to monitor uh, content moving across the web and across voice lines across this country. Uh, it was found that they did it, and a law was introduced in the Congress that would actually uh, would uh, grant them immunity. It was written by telephone lobbyists. Again, Obama came out against that law and said, we must punish these carriers for doing this because it's illegal. And then he flipped under enormous pressure from the lobbies. The technology is there. It's going to get better. It's very relatively very easy for phone, cable companies, and thus the government to monitor and listen and watch what we do every day on the web and on our phones. The only thing that's going to protect us is hard, concrete laws passed by the U.S. Congress that will make it illegal and then effective watchdogging by the government to make sure that those laws are upheld. So in order to do that, people need to pay attention. People need to talk to their members of Congress about it. They have to go to our website, freepress.net, and get involved and make sure that these uh, basic protections are upheld. And, and Josh, uh, on a related matter, the uh, President Obama's nominee for as chairman of the FCC was uh, recently uh, approved by the, by the Senate. Uh, he is supposedly uh, especially an expert on the Internet. What do you see uh, in terms of changes in FCC policy uh, now that uh, he's been approved? Julius Janikowski is is set to be approved by the Senate any day now, and and it's it's good news. From everything we know about Julius Janikowski, he's a good guy. He he is committed to enacting the policies of President Obama, which, as I mentioned, are very good for the most part. Uh, they are committed to net neutrality. They are committed to getting affordable, ubiquitous internet into every community, uh, rural and urban, rich and poor across the country. But as is always the case, as we look at the massive lobby that is in the form of the cable and phone companies, which is as big as the military or pharmaceutical industries, the proof is in the pudding. The proof is in whether or not the administration actually makes good on their promises and gets the kind of future-proof networks uh, installed that they that they promised. It is notable that Obama did pass a $7.2 billion uh, a stimulus package uh, that goes towards building out high-speed Internet across the country. But it, again, this is a, a cautionary tale, one that reminds the public that we have to stay involved in these debates, that the public has to pay attention to crucial media issues because they're all tied to the failure of, of newspapers and the shuttering of newsrooms across the country and this fundamental question of will we have the communications infrastructure to both produce good quality, hard-hitting journalism like Democracy Now! and effectively and affordably distribute it around the country. And if we don't pay attention to these issues, the distribution part is not going to work. Josh Silver, I want to thank you for being with us, Executive Director of Free Press, freepress.net. We'll link to the website at democracynow.org. When we come back, we're looking at the prisoners.